What's up? I'm Ryan. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to go over the workflows that I made to produce the video that you saw in the intro there. And it, what it is, is this recursive setup that allows us to infinitely run image to video workflows. And I'll get into what I mean by that in a second, but it's using a new a node pack that I've been working on. It's this node, node packs largely for uh, real time uses, but it's grown vast and there are a lot of use cases for it. This is one of them. So I'm going to go over like three, two and a half things. I'm going to go over the, the first one workflow using LTX image to video. Then I'm going to go over a second workflow that I used to make it uh, like do some post processing and make it audio reactive. And then I'm going to go over a third workflow, which is a one to image to video it, with this recursive setup. So I'll link to the node pack in the description. Feel free to give me a star, subscribe to the channel. You'll find the workflow in the repository and also on my Civitai profile where it will be include uh, the attendant assets like the input images and, and audio will be included so that it's easier for you to set up. So without further ado, let's go ahead and shrink this down and check out the first workflow. This is the out of the box image to video workflow from the guys at light tricks but with a few little bells and whistles on it i'm just going to skip right to those so we've got our input image and it's going into this get state node so many of you if not all of you are familiar with kajai's nodes he has those uh, among many he has those get and set nodes that allow you to set variables and access them elsewhere in the workflow these are like those, except you can set variables and access them in other workflows or in the same workflow the next time that you run it. It saves these variables to a global state, which you can access anywhere else. So we've got the get node here. This, uh, the set node for that is over here. And it's using this, just the default key. Now these are a little bit buggy. I'm still working on them, but they uh, they are fully functional. Like the the... This saving to state works fine. So I wanted to share them with you guys and see if you had any any feedback for me on stuff you'd like to see in them because I think that they're pretty cool and powerful. So we've got this standard workflow and it uses this image the first time it runs when there's nothing stored in the state. It uses this image, passes it through this standard image to video workflow using LTX. Then we get the last frame from the output and we save that last frame to the state. So you can just click run a whole bunch of times and then let it cook. And you'll get some really weird stuff. Um, like perhaps, I, I'm not sure which one I'm gonna put in the intro, but maybe it was this one. Uh, so also just to make it easier on myself, so I didn't have to take each of these workflow like outputs and then stitch them together in a video editor, I set up another uh, set of these nodes here. Uh, one to save the output um, concatenated with the output from the previous workflow run. So careful with this. It's, you know, be wary of your VRAM because when you get a giant uh, batch of images here, it's it really is tough on your computer. Okay, so now that we've gone over this main recursive workflow and it, provided you have enough VRAM, it literally could be infinite if you want it. Uh, but now, now that we've gone over this, let's jump into the next workflow, which is this post-processing one to make it audio reactive. So I've got the output from our recursive workflow here, and I've got this little song um, that I generated by with with the computers. We sharpen it, we interpolate it to make it a little longer and smoother. We get these floats. You, there's a lot of ways to do this with my various nodes, but this is one. We just get uh, a sine wave in floats for 971 frames. And we, we use that later. So we'll, we'll come back to that. And we've got our audio here. So we extract the amplitude envelope from the whole piano and then the amplitude envelope from the bass frequencies of the piano. And we, we amplify them a little bit with these mixers. So this is what the, the feature looks like from the entire piano, the amplitude envelope of the piano. We take that, we smooth it out, get something a little bit better. And then we use that to control the intensity of the bloom. 
So we're adding bloom to uh, any anything that meets this threshold. Any pixel, let's any any pixel that's brighter than this threshold will have bloom added to it. And uh, we're modulating the threshold and the blur with what? With the base of the piano. So interesting effects. We're, oh, and we're also using this sine wave from these floats to, to, to modulate the blur amount. So you can just get some really cool stuff. And then for the warp, I think we're just modulating the warp strength with the bass from the piano. And then you get this pretty cool output. It's subtle, but, uh, but it's very nice. Okay, now this... Let's see if this is done cooking. I, I like clicked this a bunch of times. Oh my god. All right, sweet. So I'm gonna. That I'll probably run this through a new audio uh, workflow, and maybe I'll share that one with you guys too. Okay. So pretty weird, pretty cool stuff. This is this is interesting. I just wanted to share it with you. Uh, yeah. Uh, fuck. Like, like, subscribe. Do whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm Ryan. Bye, bye.